Hey, Cycle 2 TPAers, welcome or welcome back to TPA Cafe. This is just a quick, quick, short video um, about, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, about um, the condition code E7 that I've been seeing more often on the Cycle 2 score reports. And so this is what E7 is and how to avoid it. E7 is, so you know that you're doing a formal assessment. Um, you know that you're submitting three samples of student work, a student that has not yet met standard, a student that has met standard, and a student that has exceeded standard. So what's happening is that some teacher candidates are submitting, um, so they're having for the formal assessment, they're having their students do a group thing, and then they're submitting three samples of student work where those students are scored with their group, like they're given a group grade and not an individual grade and not individual feedback, and that's that's immediately going to flag a condition code of E7. So what you want to do, what you need to do absolutely to avoid this condition code is you need to make sure that, now if you're not giving a group formal assessment, this is probably a non-issue because every student will be scored individually using the rubrics. Fine, great, um, amazing. If you are giving a group uh, formal assessment, each of those students needs to be scored individually and they each need to be receiving their own feedback. So... Um, their own actionable feedback from you. So just make sure that when you submit that student work, that each of those students receives their own score or their own grade and their own feedback so that the TPA the TPA assessors don't look at it and say, oh, the student was scored with a group and didn't get an individual score and an individual feedback. Because that immediately, if you don't do that, that's gonna, that's gonna elicit that condition code of E7. So just make sure that everything's individualized and you're grading them individually you're giving individual feedback. So that should be just a just a quick and easy way to avoid the E7 condition code. I hope that was helpful. I hope that um, I'm sure it will help you now hopefully avoid that E7 condition code. And I'll see you all soon in another video.